<clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. In less than six months, 166 days to be exact, the next Olympic Games will begin in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Tickets are already on sale. Athletic events are already being held at some of the venues that will be used for the Games. Olympic trials and some events have already taken place here in the U.S. And beginning April 21st, the Olympic torch begins its journey, starting in Greece, the original home of the Olympic Games. As dictated by tradition, the flame is first kindled by focused sunlight. Once the torch is lit, it will travel around Greece before being handed off to representatives of the Rio Games. But before the Olympic flame reaches the cauldron of the stadium in Rio, it will spend 95 days traveling through 500 Brazilian cities, including all 26 state capitals. The torch will travel over 20,000 kilometers by land, that's 12,500 miles for us, and 16,000 kilometers by air, almost 10,000 miles, all with the help of over 12,000 torchbearers. In the reading from Genesis this morning, we hear about a different torch. As Abram sleeps, a flaming torch along with a smoking fire pot passes between the halves of slain animals. Now this may seem like an odd event to us, but in ancient times, passing between the halves of such carcasses was a symbol of a covenant agreement. The flaming torch and smoking fire pot represent God, and their movement symbolizes God's covenant with Abram to give him descendants as numerous as the stars and to give his descendants the land from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Unfortunately, what we don't hear about today because those verses are skipped in our lectionary is that before Abram's descendants will inhabit the promised land, they will first live in another land where they will be oppressed for 400 years. We now know that this other land is Egypt and that the release from Egypt will become one of the great stories of God and God's people. But that's a story for another day. In this morning's story, at that particular moment, what Abram knew, and more importantly what Abram believed, was that God would keep God's promises. Still, it would not be smooth sailing. In fact, Abram will be a hundred years old and his wife Sarai ninety before their promised son is born. In the meantime, Abram will have doubts and will try his own ways to achieve God's promise, including having a child by his wife's servant and by passing off his wife as his sister. Yet despite Abram's doubts and misguided actions, God kept the covenant sealed in the darkness of that night by a flaming torch and a smoking fire pot. Now it should be noted that normally in sealing a covenant, both parties walked between the carcasses, almost like saying, may such a fate as these cut up animals happen to me if I don't hold up my end of the bargain. Yet in the case of this covenant, only God goes through the carcasses. Only God is required to keep the promises made in this covenant. There is no requirement made of Abram. The promise of descendants and of land is a free gift from God. We too have a free gift from God. God's grace and mercy, sheltering us like the wings of a mother hand, as Jesus put it in today's gospel, and sealed by the death of Jesus on a cross. Still, like Abram, there are times when we find it hard to believe in that gift. We face difficult times individually, as a community, and even as a world. And in those moments, God may seem distant. The Olympic Games, which are so full of celebrations, are also full of defeats. Most athletes will not win a medal. At the last Summer Games, over 10,000 athletes participated, but only 961 medals were given out. And some games have even been marred by violence and death, such as when eight members of a Palestinian organization, Black September, stormed the Israeli athlete housing during the 72 Olympic Games in Munich, 
the first Olympics to be held in Germany since World War II. When all was said and done, five of the Palestinians and 11 of the Israelis were dead, along with a German policeman. At the 96 games in Atlanta, a bomb planted in the central square of the Olympic venues where a concert was taking place, killed two people and injured over a hundred others. In this way, the Olympics are representative of our world in general. Nations and other organizations fight one another. Individuals and groups plant bombs designed to kill and maim other human beings. And then there's Mother Nature. Superstorms and just plain old blizzards, hurricanes and tornadoes kill and injure people and cause massive property damage. These sorts of tragedies can leave us wondering where God is. And we're not alone in those feelings. The writer of today's psalm expresses both belief and doubt. He starts out proclaiming the belief that God is his light and salvation despite being assailed by evildoers. Yet in the middle of the psalm, there seems to be some doubt. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn away. Do not forsake me. That last phrase recalls that even Jesus felt abandoned by God as he hung on the cross, crying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Despite these doubts, the psalm ends with words of hope and belief. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And this final instruction, wait for the Lord. During the season of Lent, we wait and prepare for both the death and resurrection of Jesus. There can't be a resurrection without death. And we can only appreciate light if there is also darkness. The Olympic flame is around for only a few months every couple of years, but the light in our lives, the light of God, can never be extinguished. No matter how dark it seems, and whether we're aware of it or not, that light of God continues to burn within us and before us, lighting our way and lightening our hearts. Amen.